Somebody is around by phone. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start the uh, learning sponsors and then we'll do the Gemma. Okay. Year of learning, Sue and Arnie Gerlich in memory of Malka Pro Man and Philip Mann. And Yisrael David ben Arav Tzvi Hirsch and Beryl ben Harav Tzvi Hirsh. Yosef yeah. Meyer ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Henya Rivka Pro Rosner, Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh. And in memory of family murdered in the Holocaust, Arav Tzvi Hirsh ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Ephraim ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Adia Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Miriam Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Pesel Bat Harav Tzvi Hirsh, Shalom ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Shlomo Yaakov ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh, Shmuel ben Arav Tzvi Hirsh. She will share her children and grandchildren in memory of her aunt, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Israel ben Arav Akiva, Marsha Federbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Oriel Paul Federbush, Oriel Pinchas ben Arav Shimon, Sharon and Fred Lisker, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Edel Bas Yaakov, Leslie and Gail Kaplan, in memory of their parents, Harry and Marjorie Sedell, Irving and Pro Kaplan, friends of Avi Gitler, Avram Meir ben Shimon, and Martha Gitler, China Bas Yeshaya, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tova Bad Yisrael Dove, friends of Malka Levy, Malka Bad Yosef, friends of Joe Wolf, Yosef Ben Chaim, Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam Levine, in memory of Ramona Levine, Rachel Mata, Bad Asher. We have a month of learning by Dov Bodlander in memory of his wife, Udl Bas Yehuda Tzvi, Mordechai and Miriam Burr in memory of his father, Yaakov Ben Mordechai, friends from Yarmouth E, in memory of Miriam and Michael Schiffer's son, Zev David Ben Shimon Halevi, David and Mindel Cheslow in memory of his mother, Bela Bas Meir. Okay. And we also wish a Shlema to Achaver Zev Kipperman, who has now moved to Menorah House. Good morning. All right. Good morning. Good morning. She, that looks, you look almost like uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel of a Shalom. Okay. Except you're uh, muted, Herschel. <laughs> okay. The mirror's mentor, so she likes it. Yeah. <laughs> the billiard to her. Uh -huh. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Okay. All right, gentlemen, we're on your Dalit. Amud uh, Aleph, right? Yeah. We got the few lines down on the top of the Amud. Okay, thank you. Where we completed the statement in the Gemara that said that you needed a ma'asa, you needed an actual act. Okay? And in terms of trying to change something, okay, in other words, had you uh, thought that, th that through thought that something was susceptible to tumor, okay? You still needed an act to change that, okay? That was what the top of the Amud was saying, both for an act as well as for any thought of making something susceptible to tumor, okay? That was the whole discussion afterwards, Michael and I got on about the handles, okay? The example that uh, we decided on was that to take grapes, for example, you could use grapes for two purposes, to make wine or simply for eating, okay? So when you have the stems still on the grapes, okay, that's the handle, so to speak, of the grape. And, okay, and if it's for the question of wine, okay, you're going to remove the stems because you don't want them, okay, to produce that in the wine. What? Okay, well, you do eventually, but not l'chat chila, okay? You could still take the stem or cherries, for example. Let's take cherries. 
is another example, right? Clearly there, some people will hold the cherry by the stem and eat it that way instead of removing the stem and just popping the cherry in their mouth because of the pit situation with cherries. But I'm just trying to give an example that we can relate to so that we clarify that discussion, okay? Okay, so you Dalit Amud Aleph, we're actually going to move right along in a moment, but I wanted to catch us up, all right? So that's why the Gemara was saying in the top of the Amud there, Yodinli de Tuma b'machshava. Ve'ein olin mitumatan ela b'shinui ma'aseh. So you need a physical change, a physical act to do so, right? Ma'aseh motzi miyad ma'aseh umiyad machshava. And so therefore the change of a, by doing an act changes it whether it's an act or whether it is a, a thought. The other example I was going to give is if you have a clay cheres, for example, the only way that that could uh, we can uh, cease the status of tuma on that clay cheres is by breaking it. Okay, it's not enough of if you thought, okay, that it was going to be tame and then try to do the opposite with another thought that doesn't work. Okay, machshava ina motzia lo miyad maase velo miyad machshava. Okay, so that. Okay. So so that's where we left off yesterday. Okay, so we are about four lines down, about five, fifth line from the top, right? Okay, v'chi tema. And if you want to say, hani mili kelim dechashive, and if you want to say this explanation of needing a physical act to change the status, it's only with things that are important, significant, Right, but in this case, for example, of the of the uh, of the grapes, okay, that's only the only purpose might be simply of the stem. Simply is maybe for the purpose of holding it so that you could eat it, if that's the case. Maybe I would say in that case since that stem is really not significant, the more significant thing is the piece of the, the uh, fruit itself, right? Maybe there, so same way that thinking to make it susceptible to tumor was acceptable, maybe thinking again could remove that susceptibility of tumor, right? Vahatnan, but aren't we taught in a Mishnah elsewhere? Any kind of handles, okay? For foodstuffs, we said, that are, can be broken, the gorin tohorot, okay? That they're there on the bottom of the foodstuff, uh, on the bottom of the threshing floor, those are tahor. Thank you, Mandy. Okay? The rabbi Yossi metameh. And Rabbi Yossi renders it to Tame. Okay. Bishlema Laman de Amar Besasan Hitir Agudan. That's acceptable when we understand the fact when we say that when it says Bisasan, that we broke the uh, situation, it means we untied the bundle. Right? Shapir, that's good, that's acceptable. Ela laman de amar mai besasan besasan mamash, but when we say that the word besasan here means that they actually broke in the sense of trampled, stepped on these pieces of grain that were in the floor of the threshing floor, and therefore that's what they did. Mai ikalamema, what are you going to say then? Hachanami here too, shebesasan mamash. Here too was saying that they had to, in order to remove any susceptibility to impurity, they had to do a clear physical act, right? Ihachi ma'ita ma'hu da'acherim. If that's the case, asks the Gemara, what was the 
perspective of these others, in other words, the other opinion, okay, who disagreed with Rabbi Yossi. The Amor, Rabbi Yossi, these, however, right, these others had an opinion that Rabbi Yossi agreed with, okay? The Tznan, as it was taught, Rabbi Yossi Mitame, okay? That Rabbi Yossi said they, such items were tame. Hi, my, what are we talking about here? Bishlema hatam ta'ama de Rabbi Yossi chazia. Okay, that's acceptable there in that case of the foodstuffs, right? What, what we can relate to the reasoning of Rabbi Yossi, why? Because he saw the same view, like the Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, as was held by Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. The Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Ho'il v'ra'uyot l'hafchan ba'atar, since it's possible to take those same small pieces of grain that came come off the stalks on the floor of the threshing floor and to move them using a pitchfork, okay? So therefore, it shows us that they should be considered tame. In other words, they still have some status, okay? Ela hacha lemai chazia. Okay, so now, therefore, what are they suitable for? These little pieces of, of uh, you know, the leftover grain that's there on the floor, okay, of the threshing floor. What are they, right? Chazia l'chisatar l'minkat l'aho begilaihu. Why, he said? Because uh, it's possible that we can do the following, right? that we can uh, say, okay, that they're suitable for uh, using them as a handhold to grab hold of the stalks of grain when we dismantle the sukkah, okay? So in other words, if there are little, these little pieces of grain sticking out from the sheaf of grain, we can use them as, as I said, to grab hold of it, to remove those sheaves of grain from the as skach from the top of our sukkah. That's what it's telling us. Okay. And if it falls on the floor and it protects you from sliding. Well, that's a different issue. Then it would still be something that would be suitable, right? right. Okay. So that would again give Rabbi Yossi a reason to say that that should be tummy. Okay. okay. That's sort of a purpose. Right. By the way. Uh huh. Okay, so let's come back, says the Gemara Gufa, to look at this. Kol yado ta'ochlin shebisasan begorin tahorot. According to here, we've got a brighter that says any of these handles, stems, things like that, okay? That could be changed, broken, okay? What happens? And there's there on the threshing floor, right? They are considered a tahor, the Rabbi Yossi metame, and Rabbi Yossi disagrees with the Tana of the Brighter and says, general principle, that if it's useful, then it could be metame tama. If it's if the let's put it this way, if the handle, if that piece, think again of the example I gave with the cherries and the stem. Okay, is it right? Or let's say that you have a little piece of a stem on, uh, on uh, grapes, okay? If you're simply going to eat the grape, okay? Stem is worthless, right? Unless you use it to hold the grape before you eat it. Then it's worthwhile. And that's a change that I use it and you don't use it? So for me, it's worthless. So for you, for you it's... Right, but for you it would, exactly, right. So how can the same object be? Why? Because it's part of the intent, the machshava. That's part of the person's intent. But I find that stem, so how do I know if, if, if it was a or not? I, I find it on the it's table. what you're, if it's just a, a, a stem there on the table with no grape attached to it, then it's, 
then it's bupkis. For, so for me, so for me, it's like, it's like using a hammer. It's like, using a, it's like using a hammer to crack a walnut and chop, depending on the intent. Wants to say it's like using a hammer to hit a walnut on Shabbos. Okay. All right. That's the example. How is that? For one person, it could be muksa. For one person, it's okay. Right. If you're not, if you're not using it to break it. If you're not you, if that. Muxa. Right. But if I use it, but if I use it as a utensil, it's okay. As a special. Right. Right. Okay. There are some. My Basa son asks the Gemara, what do we mean again when we say we're breaking it? All right. Rabbi Yochanan Amar Basa son Mamash. Rabbi Yochanan said it means that he had to trample it, squash it, whatever. All right, down clearly. All right. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, he tear agdan, that he simply untied some rope or string that was holding the the bundle together. Now, Bishlam or the Rabbi Eliezer, that's acceptable to the view of Rabbi Eliezer to Amar Bishasan Hitir Egdan. That's okay in terms of Rabbi Eliezer's view. If you simply untie the, the bundle because all you were using it, remember initially was for sale, Okay, so that you could group those 10 or 12 poles together, then it's not an issue. Okay. All right. Hainu de Matame Rabbi Yossi. That's why Rabbi Yossi says it's Tame, because he still feels that's an act, an actual physical act there. Ella the Rabbi Yochanan, the Amar Basasan Mamash, whereas Rabbi Yochanan says that it's actual some clear physical act that changes the status of those items, right? Crushing those pieces of grain on the threshing floor. Amai mitame Rabbi Yossi. Why does Rabbi Yossi then claim that that is becomes tame? Amar Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish. Ho'il v'ru'yot l'hafchan ba'atar. Why? Because it's possible to turn them over using a pitchfork, okay? That's the status. Amar Rabbi Elazar, Lama Nimshala. Okay, and now we're going to get to a rather interesting uh, uh, drasha, all right? So since we were talking about turning things over with a pitchfork, that's the uh, key uh, phrase here. Says Rabbi Eliezer, Lama Nimshala Tfilatan Shal Tzadikim Ke'atar. Why is it that the prayer of the righteous is compared to a pitchfork? The marlach to tell you, ma'atar ze ma'afech et ha'tfua begoren mimakom lemakom. The same way you can use a pitchfork to move pieces of grain from one place to another inside of the floor of the uh, threshing floor, right? So likewise, the prayer of the righteous uh, changes the uh, attribute of uh, cruelty, right? Strong word here uh, of Hashem to the attribute of mercy, okay? The uh, Koran happens to have a long note here on this as to strange that the rabbis would use this phrase, attribute of cruelty, instead of using midat hadin, the midat rachmanut. Okay? And it tries to explain why in this case it could have used that phraseology. Is it, do we, do we call tilat as a pitchfork? No, we don't call it a pitchfork, but it's a drasha. Okay, the same way the pitchfork can change the status of things. Okay, turn things over. Oh, that's like, it's, a, it's a, simply a drasha. Simply a drasha. Rabbi Eliezer's drasha. It's a nice, a nice drasha to end this eon, this particular sugya. Right. So now we get to a mishnah, a new mishnah. We're still dealing with the issue of schach. 
and what's acceptable or not acceptable to Rabbanan. Okay, and now I want to give us exam the example. What their homes, we said were thatched homes, okay, but they had to have a base for the thatching that usually went on. The thatching could just be laid on or the thatching could be weaved in between. But on that base, what did they use? They used boards, okay? So if I ask you, what's the difference between a two by four and a one by two? Okay. So, one is like roofing material, one is not. Okay, that would be one example. One like roofing material, one is not, right? Okay, the width is another example, right? Okay, so certainly a two by four is more sturdy. Okay, more tends to be more permanent, right? We all know what a two by four looks like, I think, right? Okay, a one by two, okay, is a lot thinner, narrower, things like that. So if we keep, I'm suggesting keep that idea in mind as we now go into our Mishnah, which is going to talk about boards that were used normally to build a house in their time was a board that was Fort Fachi. Okay? So that's Fort Fachi. Okay? So let's see what happens. Matnitin. Mesachachin benesarim. That one may use, says the Mishnah, boards, okay, to use as their schach, divrei Rabbi Yehuda. That's the view of Rabbi Yehuda. The Rabbi Meir Oser, and Rabbi Meir forbids it. Natan ale neser shehu rachav arba'a tfachim kshera. And now the next part of the Mishnah says, if he puts on it a board that's a width of four tfachim, it's valid. Ubilvad shelo yishan tachtam. But so long as he doesn't sleep underneath it. Okay. So this seems to be problematic. We, well, we'll see. That's the question, all right? If I put one board of four, okay, I can't sleep under it, but that would seem to imply, right, Chaim, that the rest of the sukkah might be acceptable. Let's go on now, okay? Gemara. Amar Rav says, Rav machloket b'nesarin shiyesh bahen abaa. According to Rav, okay, the argument is about boards that have a width of Fort Fachim. The Rabbi Meir eat leg zerat tikra, because Rabbi Meir says we have a decree, rabbinic decree that forbids use of such boards because it's more like a ceiling, right? Like our two by four, right? The Rabbi Yehuda, Leave leg zerat tikra, and Rabbi Yehuda doesn't hold by that decree. Right? Ava benisarin she'ein bahen arba'a divrei hakok she'ra. Okay. So this is Rav's view that boards that are less than fort fachim, everyone agrees that they are acceptable, <coughs> viable. Ushmuel ama, and Shmuel says b'she'ein bahen arba'a. Machloket. No, Shmuel says the boards, discussion of boards, are those that are not for Tfachim across. Aval yesh bahen arba'a, divrei psula. But if they are for Tfachim across, everyone agrees they're invalid. Ein bahen arba'a, va'afilu pachot mishlosha. If they're not for across and they're less than three, these are considered rods, okay? And therefore that's all they are and there's no problem with those, right? Amar Rav Papa, says Rav Papa, hachi ka'ama. He says, this is what they're saying. Yesh bahen arba'a, if the board is of width of Fort Fachim, devreya kopsula, everybody's in agreement that they are invalid. Pachot mishlosha, if they're less than three fachim wide, everybody agrees 
that they are acceptable, right? My tama, what's the reasoning? Kanin ba'almanihu. They are considered like rods in general, and therefore that's not a problem. Kiplegi, okay? Where do they have an argument? Mishlosha ard arba'a. If the width of the board is between three to four fachim, okay? Mar savar kevan delit neho shi'ur. One master holds that since they don't have shi'ur makom, as we don't measure a significant amount of space there, okay, to have lo gazrinen. We don't make such a decree. Umar savar kevan de nafke laho mitorat levud. And the other master holds when it's between three to four tfachim, and therefore you can't utilize the principle of levud as a way of filling in empty space. Therefore, Gazrinan, we do make such a decree that such boards are not acceptable. Why do you say board? The board, it's the schach that's not acceptable. The board cannot be used as schach. Okay. okay. Is no. Board? A four, a four tefach, four tefach board is not acceptable. The second part of the Gemara of the Mishnah said you can't sleep under it. So therefore, that section of the sukkah is not valid. That's the point. Okay, it's not. Now we have a mission. I'm sorry. Yeah. The board is okay. It's how you use it. The board may not be okay because if if I I could use it for something else, I could use it for maybe for the walls. Okay, but I, if I put it on. As chach, I can't sleep under it, says the end part of the Mishnah. That means that section of the sukkah is not covered with appropriate schach. And that section of the sukkah is not valid. Okay. So tnan, matan aleh, neser, shahu rachav arbaat fachim, sheira. But we have a Mishnah that says if I put a board, that is four tfachim wide on top of the sukkah, using it as chach, it's viable. So, but the Gemara, the Mishnah then goes on, but so long as I don't sleep underneath it. So that implies that it's just one section of schach. The rest of the schach is all kosher valid schach. The good part, yes, but not Sleeping under that board. Why do you say I sleep? Sleeping and eating because is the same. I couldn't eat either. Can't eat either, but the Mishnah only referred to sleep. So an implication is any other activity done in the sun. Okay? Bishlema le Shmuel. That's acceptable to the view of Shmuel. Why? Da'amar b'she'ein bahen arba'a machloket. Because he said when there is not the board of four, Fachim, that's where the argument is. Aval yesh bahen arba'a, but when there is a board of four Fachim, divrei hakop sula, then everybody would agree that that is invalid. Mishum hachi lo yisham tachtam. And therefore, because of that reason, you can't sleep or eat underneath it, Sam. Ela the Rav, but according to Rav, who says that the argument is about when we do apply a Fort Fachim board, right? And there, but there we don't have them. That would seem to imply that it would be valid with the Sukkah. The Rabbi Yehuda, and therefore, according to Rabbi Yehuda, Amai lo yishan tachtav. Why then would he say that you can't sleep underneath it, right? Mi svarat kohi. Do we really think, okay, that this is the opinion of everybody? Seifa at the aim the Rabbi Meir. This leads us back to the fact that the end of the Mishnah seems to be according to the view of Rabbi Meir. Tashma. And therefore, listen to the following brighter. Shnei stinim. 
mitztarfi. We say that two sheets, okay, can combine, okay, to make the entire, uh, right, sukkah invalid. Shnei nisirim ein mitztarfi. But two boards, we say they don't join together. Rabbi Meir Omer, says Rabbi Meir in this case, af nisirim kistini that sheets are therefore similar to boards. Now says the Gemara, vishlema l'shmoel. That seems appropriate to the view of Shmuel. The amar b'she'en b'hen arba'ar machloke. Who says when they are not, right? When we're not dealing right with a situation that don't have a width of four. Okay, that's what the argument is about. But when there are boards that have a width of four tfachim, everybody says it is invalid. Rabbi, Rabbi, we're talking here about sheets that were spread underneath the stock. Right. My okay. mitztarfim, what do we mean when we say they join together? Mitztarfim la arba'a, that they can join to make an area of four tfachim. But according to the view of Rav, excuse me, who says that when we have boards of four tfachim wide, that's what the argument is about. But if the board is not four, everybody says it's valid. Hey how is that possible? If that board has four tfachim wide, lama lahola it's terufe. Why do we have to use the language and say that they join? And if the board is not measuring four tfachim, amai, why? Right? Then it's nothing more than rods. Right? Okay. So says the Gemara. No, we're saying that we have a situation where we are talking about a board that is Fort Fahim wide. And what do we mean in this case when we say that they join? Mitztarfin la arba'a amot min hatsad that we say that they stick out, the board sticks out Fort Fahim from one of the sides, from one of the walls, right? So we have Dauphin Akuma. That's what we have in this situation there. Lishna Achrina. And now the Gemara is gonna give us some other language to show this particular kind of Machloket. Bishlema Lishmuel. It's appropriate according to the view of Shmuel. The Amar b'she'en b'hen arba'a machloket, who says that it's a situation when the boards are not fort fachim wide. That's what the argument is about. Aval yesh b'hen arba'a, divreha kol But if the boards have fort fachim wide, everybody agrees that that is invalid. My mitztarfim. And what do we mean then when we say that they join together? Mitztarfin la arba'a amot min hatsad, that they join to be four amot from the wall, from the side. Dofen akuma, we have. El el rav, but rather, what about rav's view? Bishlem la rabbi meir. That's acceptable to the view of rabbi meir. And what do we say, my mitztarfin there? Mitztarfin la arba'a amot minatsad. Here too we say it could be four amot wide board. All right? It's no, I'm sorry. My mitztarfin, when we say it's that it's joins, mitztarfin la arba amot minatsad. That it goes for the arba amot, four amot for the wall. Ela the Rabbi Yehuda, but what about Rabbi Yehuda? The Amar Afilu Yesh Arba Shera, who says there that if it 
has for a, a board a fort fachim that it's valid. My ein mitztarfim. What does it mean when it's when he says that they don't join? Kanin ba'alman in who? There we're talking about individual rods. So the Gemara then picks up and tells us as follows. Okay. Aide de ka'ama rabbi meya mitztarfi. We see here, he says, where, okay, rabbi meya is talking about its joining. Ama rabbi Yehuda says, rabbi Yehuda, ain mitztarfi. He says, they don't join. Now, what happened, said the Gemara? Tanya kivate de Rav, Tanya kivate de Mishmuel. We have a Brighton that teaches this issue, okay? Like the view of Rav, we also have another Brighton that teaches this view according to the uh, view of Shmuel. So we cite both of them. Tanya kivate de Rav. Are brighter according to the view of Ra. Okay, sachacha b'nisarim shall eres. One puts schach on the roof of their sukkah, using boards made out of eres, made out of uh, I think that's oak, right? Yeah. She'ein b'hen arba'a, and they do not have a width of four tefachim. Devrei hakol k'sheira. Everybody agrees that is valid. Yesh bahen arba'a, if those boards have a width of four tfachim, Rabbi Meir poseil, Rabbi Meir therefore says that is invalid. The Rabbi Yehuda machshir. Rabbi Meir, which material is strong or just the wood? No, that's the question. Good question, Sam. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a matter of what the material. Why do they say error? Well, let's see. Let's go on and see what the next writer tells us. Rabbi Yehuda Machshir. And in that situation, Rabbi Yehuda says it is valid. Amar Rabbi Yehuda. Says Rabbi Yehuda, Ma'aseh B'Sha'at Hasakana. I'm going to give you an example, says Rabbi Yehuda, with a story that during the time of Sakana, remember that was the Hadrian persecutions. And Hadrian had decrees making certain things forbidden. Okay, so during this time, he says, Sheheviu Nisarin, that they brought boards, Shahayu Bahen Arba'a, and those boards measured Fort Fachim, Besichachnu Al Gabe Mir Pesach, and we put them over the porch of somebody, Vyashavnu Tachtein. And we sat underneath it and we used it as a sukkah. So that's his, his proof, a real masa. Notice now what the answer is. Amrulo, they said to him, Misham Raya, you're going to use that as a, as a proof, right? Ain Sha'at Hasakana Raya. Activities during the time of that persecution of that decree is not a valid citation, right? Tanya Kivate Shmuel. And now we have a brighter that follows the view of Shmuel. Sachacha b'nisarim shel eres. Again, he covered the top of his sukkah with boards made of oak. She yesh bahen arba'a. And there with it, what? That's cedar, that's not oak. That's cedar. That's cedar. Okay. Uh, which uh, board with a fort fachim? Devreha kol psula, according to Shmuel. Everybody would agree that that is invalid. Ein bahen arba'a. If it doesn't have a width of fort fachim, Rabbi Meir posel. Rabbi Meir then would say it's invalid. But Rabbi Yehuda machshir. And Rabbi Yehuda would say it's valid. Umode Rabbi Meir. But Rabbi Meir would acknowledge. She'im yesh bein neser leneser. Kimelo neser. If the space between one board and another board is equivalent to that of a board. Shemaniach 
Pesel Benehem, that one puts Pesel, which is the psolet, that refuse that we saw that came from either the floor of the threshing floor or that it came from the wine press. Okay, it's like sticking uh, gum or, or plastic or, or rubber or something in between, something that's flexible, right? In between. Ukshera, then it would be valid, right? Umode Rabbi Yehuda. And Rabbi Yehuda acknowledges. She'im natana leha neser, shehu rachav arba'at fachim, that if one put a board there that was fort fachim, right? What happens? Kshera, that it's valid. Ve'en yishenim tachtav, but then you can't sleep underneath it. Vahayoshen tachtav, lo yetsa yedei chovatav. What? But one who sleeps underneath it, that is not valid. Okay, that was the second part of our Mishnah. It's what? It's what? for me, but because I don't because, sleep. Right, right. Because, in other words, that part of the, of the sukkah is not valid. That's the case. Okay. Okay. In other words, the rest of the sukkah might be valid, but that section of the sukkah is not valid. Right? Now, what happens? We get to a new piece in the Gemara. Itmar. Okay. What is the Gemara is going to suggest? I'm using the sitter for a moment, everybody. Okay. There's my flat board, right? And that, if it's Fort Fachim Y, it's not valid. <coughs> what am I going to do? Put the board this way. Change the position of the board. Okay, assuming that it will stay. Okay. All right. So that's what the Gemara is going to tell us. Itmar, it was said. Afghan al Tzidehim. If we put it on its side. In other words, those Fort Fachim wide boards, and I flip it, okay? Rav Huna Amar Psula. Rav Huna claims it's not valid. The Rav Chista, the Rav Barbar Rav Huna, Amre, Sheira. And the two of them say it's valid. Okay? What happens? Ikle, Rav Nachman Masura. It happened that Rav Nachman came to Sura. O legabe, Rav Chista, Varaba ba Rav Huna. Okay? And it came to him, okay, Rav Nachman, right? Rav Chista and Rabba bar bar Huna. Amrele. And they said to him, Hafchan al Tzidehen Mahu. If you flip the board on its side, what's its status? Amar la hope, Sula. He said to them it was invalid. It's like, it's as if it's no different as if you put metal spits and use that as the underpinning for the schach, right? And Rav Huna says, They didn't tell you, okay? In other words, he didn't tell you an answer. All right, don't we say, why don't you say like I said? Amrulo, they said to him, Umi amar lecha mar tama, and did the master give us a reasoning? Velo kablinan mine, and therefore we didn't accept his view. Amar laho, he said to them, Umei ba'itu minai tama, okay, what view, what need is there for me to have to give you a reason? And he didn't give one to them. Shall we say then that this is a support to the view of Rav Huna? Why? Because it's possible then that we might argue and say the following, that maybe putting that sukkah like that, and you can see on 14b3, if you're using art scroll, a picture of that 
a kind of a diagram, right? With that kind of a sukkah, right? Maybe in that situation, okay, we would say the following, that maybe the person can't put their majority of their body and their table in there. Oshinifritsa baparza kadesha yizdake she yizdake ba gadibavat rosh. Or maybe we'd say that there's another problem with that sukkah, okay? That uh, the walls are such that an animal could jump through and break through the wall, right? Oh, perhaps shenatana leha nesa shehurachav arbaat fachim or that there has boards that are four tfachim wide. Afal pi shelo hechnis letocha ela shlosha tfachim. Psula or that even though in that case, when you turn the boards over, okay, on the side, all right, we still have a problem, okay, of, of a gap larger than three, fachim, in that case too. And all those situations, those, that sukkah would be invalid. Hechi dami, how, what are we talking about then? My love kegon shehefchan al tzadim, is it not that we turn the boards on the side? Lo, no, says the Gemara. Hacha b'mayes kinen. What are we talking about? Kigon da amcha apuma. Okay. No, what are we talking about? All right. That he put the board, one board, on the entrance area of the sukkah. Okay. That's the point that he's saying. The metal, the metal alta, the ail tzlata legadio. Okay, and that therefore part of that board, three tfach, three, okay, three tfachim of the board was over the sukkah, and one tefach was outside the sukkah. That's what it's talking. Va'afik ya chad the bar, and one amount was sticking outside the sukkah, right? The Havale Pasel Hayotse Min Hasuka, because in that case, we would say that amount sticking out was like so that it was like, uh, I don't want to use garbage, but it was like nothing valid. Hayotse Min Hasuka. And we say, the whole Pasel Hayotse Min Hasuka, Nidun Kasuka. And then therefore, we would say that amount. It's like just considered part of the sukkah itself and not anything that's far to sky. It's, it's three tzfachim. You don't even need the, the board in the first place. Right. Because right. you could have them. Right. right. All right. And we'll stop there. It doesn't look like we got a clear answer about the boards on the side. Did we get okay. a clear The answer seems yeah. to be that, first of all, there was a machloket. Okay. Rav Nachman held that even if you turn them on the side, right. it's no good, okay? And others have- and what was his reason? His, his well, reason, what? Well, his reasoning was because when you turn it on the side, you're going to have a, a fairly large gap between the boards and the wood won't work there. Right. So that's still gonna render that sukkah invalid. That was his view. They, they don't say how wide it is. Right. Yeah. No, right. But we're well, assuming it's a separate board. On the side. Okay, if you think of a board, all right, the normal board, yeah. okay. Side, it's less. It's a lot less. Okay. Right. That's why you call it two by four or one by two, because that gives you, when you say it that way, it has, gives you a clear image of what, what it is flat and what it is on the side. Right. One of your Sam, if, if it was not any narrow one, then there would be no question. No, right. So apparently it isn't much narrow. That's the point. All right, everybody take care. Have a good day. Thank you so much, by the way. Yeah. Thank you.